morning, and I just uh, thank God because it's God's grace that has allowed me to be here today. So I don't really know where to start this story, but I'll just start it how I am. Come on. Come on. So um, let's see, I was born September 6, 1979. My mother, my brother was born 13 months later on October 18, 1980, and my sister was born May 5, 1985. We all three were born on the cusp of crack cocaine to two musicians. Our parents were married. Both sides of the family were very highly respected in their respective communities. We lived in a stucco and brick duplex with hardwood floors throughout. And in fact, my parents owned this duplex. The family dynamics were not perfect, but we were each conceived in love. We wanted we were wanted and cherished children. Our parents were talented and ambitious musicians, having known and played with Prince in his early days, as well as the Sounds of Blackness, Sly and the Family Stone, George Clinton, and others. Nonetheless, by the time my sister was born, my father already had a pattern of leaving and not returning for days, breaking all of our hearts. Crack cocaine threatened to crumble our family. Our home became a crack house and um, we moved out. Soon after, Come on. So soon after we lost everything and our mother was left to uh, fend for three children. She worked long hours and returned home exhausted and agitated and the void of losing our father was always present. Um, I wanted to see him, hear his voice. I wanted to show him the things I was learning. I wanted to sit on his lap and be taught. I wanted to, I missed the sounds of the congas and the interesting food that he cooked. And as a very young child, I became depressed and very angry. And these are the emotions that permeated our home for so many years. Um, to transcend the cracks in our family, we screamed at each other, we showed no love or compassion, and I'm sure I'm not the only one in the house that um, cried herself to sleep each night. Um, I was so young and already I was facing a dark path. So, um, but interest, when I was, uh, something interesting happened to me when I was five, I'm sort of jumping, but when I was five, a very heavy antique radiator fell on top of me, and I was rushed to the hospital, and my left ankle had been crushed. The doctors performed an operation, and they reconstructed my ankle. I was told that I almost had to lose my foot, and I remember being in a tremendous amount of pain and crying a lot, especially at night because of the pain. And I had to wear a heavy um, cast for a long time, and once I got the cast off, I was able to be the flower girl in my aunt's wedding. And I just remember limping down the aisle. I still have a scar on my ankle, but I don't remember a whole lot about that experience. But from time to time, I still kind of uh, feel this sensation that I'm going to lose my foot. As an adult, more important than losing my foot is uh, losing my soul. I had a dark side, a hidden side. I was consumed by sin. And more alarming, I was not truly conscious of the severity of my sin or even what constituted a sin. I grew up surrounded by, by sin. And by the time I was 26 years old, I had done a lot of things that I probably don't have time to get into now, but I got married when I was 20, and I had a baby when I was 21. And um, after she was born, my daughter, Rajiva, after she was born, about four months later, I became a single parent very difficult, um, but I hid behind my degrees and I, I rationalized everything, all of the wrong that I that I did. I did a lot of uh, very, uh, very uh, terrible things. Um, I, as hard as I tried, I couldn't correct any of my sins. I just felt very guilty and very ashamed and very uh, unclean. And um, I just continued to descend deeper and deeper into sin. And I was not really clear about the root of my, my troubles. So as I shared, this analogy comes to mind um, that
the absolute weight of the glass of water that one is holding is not important. It's the length of time that you hold that water which matters. If I hold it for one minute, it's not a problem. If I hold it, hold it for an hour, my arm will begin to ache. If I hold it for a day, I may have to go in an ambulance to the hospital. So I have been holding very foul, and disgusting, and paralyzing sins for a decade and some years. My sins, spending my life at work, trying to pay bills, preoccupied with planning a future for my daughter, never putting God first, having no real concept of what it meant to put God first, even though I profess to be a Christian and attended church services, gossiping, <laughs> slandering, lying, lust, idolatry, um, just everything that's in the Bible as a sin, I've, I've done it. And then one day I just knew I was tired. And I knew that I couldn't keep going. And I just couldn't see a point to my life. I love being, being a mother. And my daughter really became uh, the sole purpose behind everything since the moment that she was conceived. But still, as much as I loved her, um, and there was no end to what I could, would do for her, I was still like exhausted. And I just wanted to quit. Um, I was working every day. 7.15 a.m. until 6 o'clock at night, and I would go get her, and we would go right back to school, and I would work until 8 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock, just trying to get ready. Um, there was a lot of pressure at work. Um, and um, I was also preparing to go back to school to get a doctorate. I thought a higher position would give me some freedom. I could spend time with my daughter. Um, but none of that, none of that happened. Um, I was just, I, I realized I was too tired. I would take Rajiva to her piano lessons and I would fall asleep. Or we would be heading home and I would be dozing off at the wheel. I was really, really tired. I'm a single parent. Um, she doesn't have weekends with their father, father or monetary support. It's just the bills and the responsibilities, they just never, they never ended, um, but I wanted my daughter to have the best. Um, this past summer, I was going to buy a home, and I had it approved, and we found a house and everything, and it's beautiful, but a problem arose, and we weren't able to get the home, and I just, at that point, I just felt crushed, like totally defeated. Um, just very, very very depressed and very disappointed. Um, but one night I stayed up really late and I applied for a teaching position. And as the um, interview approached, I actually prayed, something that I, I just never really did, but I actually prayed and I asked God to um, open this door for us. And God answered my prayer and he brought me here to the UAE. And um, almost immediately, Within two weeks, I connected with two disciples, Sonia and Eddie, and I wasn't, I didn't know what a disciple was. They were just, they were just really, really nice. But they kept inviting my daughter out of church. And one, one morning, we finally went to church, and then I started to study the Bible. And, um, I really questioned everything in the Bible. I tried to refute things, challenge things, but I, I, I couldn't do it successfully. Every the, the, the message would always linger. The, the studies would always linger as much as I tried to fight it. I couldn't. My worldly wisdom and my experiences could not could not contend. Um, the more I studied, the more I realized that my sin was my bondage, and that Jesus Christ um, is my savior and refuge, and that I could start over. So. While I, stu I shudder at the thought of losing a foot, Jesus Christ paid the price for my sins with his life. He gave his all for me. He endured persecution and humiliation, betrayal, torture, abuse, crucifixion for me. He took this cup for me, and he gives my soul rest and peace and security. He fills me with joy that's deep. He removed all the crust from my heart and healed all the, the very deep wounds. He illuminated all of the dark in me. And, um, he forgave me for my sins. So if it were not for Jesus Christ, I would be empty right now. I really wouldn't know the depths of joy and love that I've finally experienced.
31 years on, on Earth, I finally know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. um, I had explored Buddhism, Hinduism, African spirituality, Islam, astrology, palmistry, <laughs> numerology, tarot, you name it. I was, I was very open-minded, but none of those um, paths were the way. They couldn't cleanse me. Nope. Couldn't release my happy load. Couldn't give me a new life. Um, Jesus showed me the way. Jesus is the absolute truth, and Jesus, tried, Jesus Christ excuse me, and showed his love for me. He gave his life for me on the cross. And he continues to love me and bless me, and he's faithful to me. He's attentive to me like a father. He disciplines me when I'm wrong. He answers all of my prayers. Um, he's so strict, and um, I'm just learning to heed. And the scripture that I love is uh, Psalm 34, 4 through 6, and then 18. It says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all of my fears. And those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Um, and then verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. So, mm -hmm.